Hello everybody, it's Tim here for one final time tonight. <laughs> With a review for It Follows. I just figured I might as well jump in and get that shit also out of the way so I can jump straight into my Wes Craven movie reviews after these three new reviews I'm doing here. I recently saw this movie. Um, this movie's been getting a lot of hype online as far as it goes. Uh, I do think this is a great movie. For a, I, I think this is a great movie. I don't think it's going to be a classic though. I don't think it's an amazing movie, but I do think it's a great movie, and yes, there is a difference between great and amazing, <laughs> but yes, uh, I do think this is a great horror film, but not an amazing one. I like it more than Unfriended, um, but yeah, as far as it goes, pretty much you got like this chick who has sex with this guy, who's her, 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 I guess she's been dating him for a while, um, she has sex with him, the girl is the, is the girl from the movie The Guest. Who I forgot her name, but she was on the guest. I remember her from that movie. She played the daughter in that movie. Pretty much uh, the second main character after um, Dan Stevens, I believe was his name, who played the you know the guest in that movie. Which I like the guest as well. I would say I was more entertained by the guest than I was this movie. But I think all together though, I think this movie as a whole is slightly better than the guest. But I would say I was more entertained by the movie The Guest than this one. But yeah. So she has sex with this dude. Um, then you find he pretty much tells her that now that she's had sex with him, there's this creature that she's going to be able to see because he was able to see it before her. And now that she's had sex with him, she's caught, you know, basically the creature disease off of him. Pretty much like a, you know, an STD kind of thing, which I think is a neat idea uh, for a horror film. It's pretty much anybody that screws this chick is going to be able to see this creature too. And then the creature just takes on different forms at different times, whatever it wants to look like. And you don't get any, uh, like, insight into the creature about why it does what it does or whatever. You don't get any kind of any information about it. Pretty much it's just an it follows. It's a creature. It's an it. All it does is take different forms and just follow you. And if it catches you, you're dead. It just keeps walking towards you. The funny thing in the movie, though, is it walks, like, slower and shit. If you was, like, standing, like, ten feet away, it'd take it, like, fucking twenty minutes to get to you. That was one of the problems I had with the movie because I kept laughing at the creature because it's, like, slower and dog shit. Um, but it kind of made me laugh. This movie, though, uh, is cool in a way, though, that I like the score. It really reminds me of John Carpenter's Halloween. This film really feels like a throwback to John Carpenter's Halloween. Um, it's more of a suspense film than a slasher movie. This is not really a slasher movie. There's really only two deaths in the whole movie. Uh, one at the beginning for with a girl who also had sex with the, the dude that the, that the chick from The Guest has sex with. Um, so she gets killed by the, you know, the it. And then uh, later on, there, the this other guy who has sex with the, with the girl from The Guest... And, he gets killed by the it. Who like it? Funny thing is though, is the creature takes on like the form of his mom, and she like she like badges down the he's beating the hell out of his door, knocking on it, and he answers it, and he's like, "Mom, what the fuck?" You know, and she basically jumps him, you know, and it looks like she's like humping him or whatever, and then she at the same time she's like touching her body against his, and it's killing him at the same time. I guess it's like I don't know how exactly the death is. It's an interesting way to go. You'd have to see it to understand it. Uh, she's kind of like, she's touching her arm against his and stuff, or her body against his, and there's like smoke coming out, and he like dries up or something, and just falls over dead. But, um, but yeah, that death was kind of silly for me, seeing like this chick like hump this dude to death or whatever. I'm like, what? <laughs> kind of took me out of the movie, because most of the movie is pretty much played seriously. There's not really any comedy in it. Sorry, there's a bug in my face there. But yeah, pretty much this movie is played seriously, even with us. Uh, uh, kind of a kind of a silly idea of like a sexually transmitted you know slasher supernatural slasher, but the movie plays it really well though and pulls it off and makes you see it as a serious threat, which this movie could have went the exact opposite and just been a comedy pretty much, but it plays it in a serious way though. Another thing I like about the movie um, is that uh, the movie doesn't really have like a time period it takes place in. It's one of those like retro movies, kind of like like The Guest <laughs> and Drive. The movie Drive or Ryan Gosling. Pretty much like those two. Where it's kind of like a retro movie where it's like new age. It takes place pretty much now because they have like, you know, advanced technology or whatever. But at the same time, they're watching like black and white TVs and shit like that. So it's like a mixture of two different time periods. You know, I like that kind of stuff in movies. That where a movie, It makes a movie feel not dated. You know, like it could take place in any time period. I like that. Uh, I think stuff like that's real cool. Uh, artistically, I think that's a really cool way to do a movie. It's pretty much the creature just keeps following her around, following her around. It kills this other dude she has sex with. There's a cool beach scene where the creature's like on the beach and uh, it's like coming towards her. 
and they're like she they're shooting at this one nerdy guy that she's friends with like he's not really nerdy but he's kind of like a dork really he hits it with a chair and he gets like blown backwards um basically towards the end of the movie she keeps running away from it and she's had enough of this shit the dorky kid you know who's her friend he's had a crush on her for a long time all the actors have good chemistry together the girl that plays like her plays the blonde haired girl the girl from the guest uh, her si her character's sister in the movie, she's good. All the acting is good from the other characters, or actors, too. Um, she's got, like, a group of friends. The dorky guy has, a has a has like, a black-haired sister or whatever. I don't even remember her name, though. She, um, I don't remember most of these characters' names, honestly. But they were, I mean, most of the side characters, I don't remember their names. But they were entertaining, still. Um, and they were likable, the actors were. Pretty much at the end, the dorky guy has comes up with this cool idea. But he wants to like take her and put her in this swimming pool. And he's got all these electronics rigged up where he's going to throw him into the pool, electrocute this bastard when it gets in the water after her because, you know, it just keeps following him. Um, so they get to the end. The creature gets ready to come into the pool after her, but it knows what's up. So it just be like grabbing stuff, throwing it in the water, trying to electrocute her. I like this ending. It's a cool action-packed ending. I um, may not action-packed like a Die Hard movie or nothing, but for a horror movie, though, I like this action when most horror movies don't have, like, over-the-top die-hard action and shit. But for this movie, I enjoy this action, and it feels, you know, well-earned. Um, one thing I thought was interesting is that the creature is actually a physical being. It's not so much that the creature, like, can only harm the person it's attacking. It can harm other people, too. But uh, it doesn't seem to be able to kill other people, though, or at least as far as I know, except for people it's specifically targeting, you know, that's been cursed by this thing or whatever because they screwed somebody that was else that was cursed by it. It can only seem to kill people like that. Or as far as we know, though, I'm sure in the sequel, though, he'd be able to kill other people, too. But what, whatever. But, um, so, he keeps throwing stuff in the pool, trying to electrocute her. And one thing leads to another. The nerdy guy, uh, the dorky guy, I mean, dorky guy, takes a gun, comes up to it, throws, like, a sheet over it, which is cool, because, you know, he can't see it, but, another bug, sorry. Throws, like, a sheet over it, you know, he can't see it, but once the sheet gets over it, you know, he can make out where it's at. He puts the gun, like, right to its head, and, like, blows its, you know, freaking brains out, and it falls into the water. It starts coming after the girl. It's grabbing her and trying to, like, you know, pull her towards it so it can kill her. She gets out, and the nerdy guy, the dorky, I keep saying nerd, dork is what I should say. He's really a dork. He's, like, aiming into the water. He fucking blows it again right in the head, and they look down in the water, and there's, like, a whole, well, she looks down in the water, and there's, like, blood everywhere. So you get the idea that the creature's dead. But uh, the next scene, she has sex with the, the dorky guy. They're a couple now. They're like walking down, you know, the street holding hands. Kind of romantic. Um, well, not really romantic, but kind of kind of some sweetness to it. They're walking down the street, and you see like a shadow behind them, but you don't know if it's the creature or if it's just um, you know, somebody standing behind them. So the movie ends ambiguously. So it can be whatever you want. It can be, you know. It can be the creature died, because it sure looked like it was dead in the swimming pool with all the blood everywhere. So it can be the creature's dead, you know, a happy ending if you're that type of person. Or it can be, you know, if you're kind of a bitter type of person. Well, not so much a bitter, but if you prefer, like, a darker ending, you know. Which, I like darker endings, too. But if you prefer a darker ending, uh, you can just be like, well, that's the creature. It's still alive. It just kills them eventually, you know, whatever. You can just go that way. Which they hadn't seen, which they don't see any more signs of the creature after they took it out in the swimming pool. So... <clears throat> So, even if they didn't kill it, they must have slowed its ass down for a long time. <laughs> at least until the last shot. So, it can be whatever you want it to be. It's one of those types of endings. You can either say the creature's dead, it's just somebody standing behind him. It's probably nothing. Uh, or just a shadow. Sorry, another bug. I'm outside. There's bugs that work. But, yeah, it can just be, you know, just a shadow of somebody just walked up behind him. Or you can say it's the creature actually still coming after him. It's whatever you want it to be. You know, unless they just do a sequel and explain it, which... They'll probably do a sequel to this movie since it's getting really good reviews and everybody really seems to love it online, which I, I really like this movie. I do. I think, I think it is a great movie. But I don't think it's a masterpiece or a horror classic or anything. I do I do give it four stars out of four. I do think it's a great film, but I don't think it's like, you know, the next Shining or nothing, you know, with Jack Nicholson. It's nothing like that. Um, or the next Halloween with, uh, you know, Jamie Lee Curtis. Nothing like that either. But for what it is, though, I think it's a great movie with a neat idea of, like, an evil serial killer, you know, supernatural STD. <clears throat> Another thing is that the, when the creature takes on forms, it takes on, like, random different forms of, like, naked old people and all kinds of shit. Um, <laughs> sorry, once again. It got, I mean, sorry, it went dark there for a second. But the creature takes on, like, random crazy-ass forms of, like, naked old people and shit. 
pretty much the most of the forms it takes on are not so much forms that would allow it to sneak up on somebody. They're just there kind of like for symbolism, you know, for you to read more into the story of the movie. You know, the movie pretty much under, I believe the underlining theme of this movie is kind of like, you know, sex and adulthood and stuff like that. So you can read into the, you know, the movie, whatever you want. But it's clear from, like, when you think about what the director was going for, that the different forms the creature takes on, like the naked old people and shit like that, and like the guy's mom with the one breast hanging out or whatever, that it's like, it's going for symbolism of some kind, you know, some sexual type symbolism, obviously. So you can read into that whatever you want. It's a little artsy fartsy, but at the same time, you know, I'm entertained, so fuck it. Uh, <laughs> I enjoyed the movie, so I can overlook some little artsy fartsiness. But yeah, all in all, this is a four star film. Would I watch a sequel to it? I really don't think you need a sequel to this movie. I, I think this movie's fine as a one off. I don't want to know, like, the history, you know, of it. I don't think you could come up with anything. I don't mean. I'm sure that a talented writer, talented writer, could probably come up with something interesting for the creature, you know, the it creature, or whatever, you know, the it follows creature. But at the same time, I'm thinking, what really is there to do with a sequel to this? I mean, all the creature's gonna do is just walk slow and keep following you again. That's pretty much it. <laughs> I mean, so other than giving a few, you know, insights into the creature's, you know, backstory or where it came from or whatever, I don't see how you could stretch that into a whole movie I guess you could but I think the plot would be kind of thin if you just stretch like the origin story of the creature into one whole movie you know what would it be just some guy summoned a demon by accident and fucked up and now it's haunting him just chasing him and when he fucks somebody else it just goes on and on I mean I don't need a whole movie for that that could be like one 30 minute episode of a TV show but what, whatever whether we get a sequel or not as far as this one goes it's four star film it's, it's a great movie in my opinion but not an, an excellent or amazing movie but a great one, and definitely something horror fans should check out. Um, but yeah, um, I'll see you guys again with my first Wes Craven video, and I can't wait to get into him because Wes Craven is one of my favorite directors. And so I'll see you guys again with the start of the Wes Craven-a-thon.